Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the lead code question minimum domino rotations for an equal row. Alright, so in a row of dominoes, AI and BI represent the top and bottom halves of the ith domino. A domino is a tile with two numbers from one through six and one of each half of the tile. Okay, so uh, we may rotate the ith domino so that AI and BI swap values. Return the minimum number of rotations so that all the values in A are the same or all the values in B are the same. So it's an or. They don't both have to be the same. Either one has to be the same. And if it cannot be done, return negative one. All right. So uh, what I'll be doing is let's just look at this example over here uh, where we have an A value of this and a B value of this. So a domino is basically a one sided thing. So you can see my hand over here. So this over here would be one side and this over here would be the other side. And I meant to say two sided. Sorry. So each of the sides has its own number. So this would have one number and this would have another number. So A might be representing this side of our domino, while B might be representing the other side of our domino. And what we can do is we can swap out these values. So the value of A will be the value of B and the value of B will be the value of A. And the reason that we're going to be swapping them is so that we want a domino row where all the numbers are the same. So for example, this over here is the solution. And as you can see, they all have the same value on one side. So two, 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 two. Or we could have all the same values on the side of B. So either of them works, but we have to have at least all of the values in one of the sides. And if that is not possible, we end up returning negative one. All right, so uh, I'll be looking at the same question over here and let's just look at it step by step. Okay, so this is the A values on top. So everything above this red line is the A value and everything below it is the B value. So that's telling us we have two and five on either sides of a certain domino. Now, what is the goal over here? The goal is that we want one row which is completed with the same number. So in order to reach that goal, we're gonna be iterating through our dominoes over here for a total of four times. Now, why exactly four times and what are we going to be doing in those four times? All right, so the goal in general is so that a single row has all the same numbers. But let's just narrow down our goal for now so that we have all the same numbers for the row A, okay? So we want everything in A to be a same number and that's our goal. So to achieve that goal, what we're gonna do is we can have two conditions. So what is the first number of A going to be? Now in this case, we, we're gonna consider the first number of A to be two. But another thing that we could do is we can make a swap over here where five would be in place of two and we will consider the first number to be five. So now in this case, let's just take it as two and each time we're gonna be going through our uh, list over here and we're gonna check if the next value, which in this case is one, if that is equal to two. In this case, it's not. So that means that we're not going to have the same array as it is right now. So this is not it, but just to make sure if we can possibly reach an answer, we're gonna check the other side. So now we're gonna go to the same index in B. And over here, we actually have the value two. And what that basically tells us is that once we make a swap, we will be able to achieve the values of all twos. So in this case, we're gonna assume that we're gonna make a swap. So two comes over here, one goes over here. And we wanna keep track of that somewhere. So for that, we'll have a variable called count, which keep tra keeps track of how many uh, swaps we make. So in this case, currently we made one swap. Okay, so now we go here and two already exists in the same row as A. So obviously we don't have to make any swaps. And uh, same over here, same over here. So now we go over here and two does not exist over here. So let's just cross that out. And now we're gonna check does two exist in the same index for the array B and it does. So in that case, that means we have to make another swap. So in this case, our count increases to two again. So now our count is two and this becomes two, this becomes four. We're not actually gonna be swapping them. Instead, I'm just doing that for visualization purposes. And over here, one more thing I wanna notice is we have a two on both the sides. So the question is, which two do we pick? The one in A or the one in B? So we're always gonna pick whatever is in the same row as the current row that we're looking to find all the same elements in. And the reason for the, that we chose this two is because we want the least amount of swaps. So if we did choose this two, our count would have been three instead of what could actually be two. So that over there is one of our solutions. And that also happens to be the solution. But let's just take a look at the other three cases as well. Now, the third case is going to be where the starting value is actually going to be five. 
So we're starting off with five and this over here is going to be two. And now our goal over here is to make everything over here a five, but that's obviously not going to happen. So we're not going to get anything back from that. So that's the second condition. Now the third condition we have is we look at row B. So we already took care of both the conditions for row A. So now we go to row B and we're gonna check if everything in row B can be the same as the value five. So that is one of our solutions. So we check that. And the other solution that is possible is we make a swap and over here we end up with the number two and this becomes five. So the goal here is to see if everything in B can now have a value of two. So if that is possible, then in that case, we're gonna return that. So let's just go through the count uh, that we're gonna get using this. So two is gonna be over here. Then we have two here, so nothing changes. So we make one swap here, second swap, third swap. So we have a total of three swaps. And sorry for writing, confusing you with this, but the original answer we had was two. So now we have the answer two and three. Both of them are valid answers, but which one do we choose? So we're always going to be choosing the minimum count because we wanna make the least amount of swaps as possible. So in this case, we're gonna be choosing the number two since two is less than three. So two is going to be our answer and that's what we end up returning. We're always returning the minimum. But if we do not have any answer, we end up returning negative one. All right, so I think the question is pretty simple. So now let's see how we can solve this using code. All right, so we're gonna start off with a quick uh, base case. So we're gonna check what the length of A is. And just to make sure the length of A and the length of B are obviously always going to be the same. So uh, checking either one is the same thing. So if the length of A is less than or equal to one, then in that case, we can just directly return zero. So if we have a length of one, that means that the entire row already only has one number. So we return zero. And if there is nothing, then again, we return zero. Okay, so we got that out of the way. And over here, we're going to be making a helper function. Now, what is the purpose of this helper function? So what this helper function is gonna do, it's gonna keep track of given a A value and a B value and a target, the number of swaps it takes in order to reach a row which is completely filled with only one number. So that's exactly what our helper function is doing. So over here, we're gonna give it a target value. We're given, gonna give it our array B and we're gonna give it an array, uh, sorry, we're gonna give it an array A and an array B. All right, perfect. So we're gonna start off by initializing our count, which obviously starts off at zero. And now that we have this, we're gonna go inside of a for loop. So to do that, I'll be going through it by each of their index. So for index in range, and the range is gonna be uh, whatever the length of A or B is. Again, they both have the same length, so it doesn't matter which one we choose. All right, so over here we have each of the index. So what we wanna do is we wanna get the A value and the B value. We want both of the values. So I'll be using lowercase a and b to find that. And what is the value of the lowercase a going to be? So we're gonna go to the list a, and we're gonna get whatever index we're currently on. So that is gonna be the value of lowercase a, and obviously for b, same thing, but instead we're gonna to go to list b. All right, so over here, we're gonna check if our target, so if target is equal to our a value. Now, if our target is equal to the a value, that means that we don't need to do anything. That means that we already have that number inside of our row. We don't need to make any swaps. We're good to go. So in that case, we're just gonna continue. And if you don't know what continue does, we're not gonna do anything else and we're just gonna go back to our for loop over there. All right, perfect. So we have this and now we're gonna have an else statement. Now this else statement means that our target is not in A, but the target could be in B, right? So that's what we're gonna check for. So if B is equal to our target, that means that we do have the value and we can have a row with the same values. Granted, we make a swap. So since we're making a swap, we're gonna increase our count by one. So after that, we're gonna go uh, have an else statement. And this means that we do not have the number in A or B, so we don't have it at all. So in this case, we're gonna change our count. Now, the reason we're changing our count and what we're gonna change it to, we're gonna change it to positive infinity. Now, it might be confusing. Why are we changing it to positive infinity? And the reason we're changing it to positive infinity is so that since we're passing it through our function for a total of four times, this is going to be a really big value. And every other value is going to be smaller than positive infinity. But now the question is, 
What if we have four positive infinities as our output? Then in that case, that means that we do not have an answer at all and we end up returning negative one. And after we reach this point, so if the number is not in A or B, that means that we're never gonna get the answer. So there's no point in going inside of the for loop again. And in that case, we're just gonna break out of our for loop. And that should be it for our helper function. And we also wanna return our count at the ending. So that's it for the helper function. And now we wanna actually get that function out. All right, so now we actually wanna call our function on the four different cases that we had. So we're gonna store this value in a variable called res. So the value that we're gonna be taking, so we're gonna be calling the four functions with helper, and we're gonna get four different counts. And so what value are we going to be taking from that? So the answer to that, the value that we're going to be choosing is gonna be the minimum of those four values. Like I said earlier, we want the least amount of swaps. So let's start off by calling our helper function and let's just call it on the simplest case that we know. So the target is gonna be whatever is at the zeroth index of list A and the two lists are gonna be A and B. So in other words, what that's telling us is that we want a row A to be filled with this target value over here, which is A0. So now let's go into another case. So in this case, helper. And this time we're gonna make the target the same. The target is still gonna stay as A0. But what we're gonna do over here, is we're gonna give it the list B comma A. Now what this means uh, compared to this is that we want A0 to be inside of row B. So everything in row B has to have the value of A0. So that's what that, this function over here is telling us. Okay, so that's pretty simple. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy the same thing over. Hopefully you understand what those two mean. And the only thing that we're gonna change now is our target instead of being A0 is now going to be B0. And that should be it for our result. Okay, so finally we're going to end up returning our result. Now the thing is, our result could, uh, we could have a value of negative one. So how do we know when do we want to return negative one? And the answer to that is pretty simple. So if everything inside of results is equal to positive infinity, that means we have no answer. Then in that case, res over here is also going to have an uh, answer of positive infinity. And when result has an answer of positive infinity, we're going to end up returning negative one. So we return res if and only if our result is not equal to positive infinity. So float in. But else, so let's say if our result is equal to positive infinity, and in that case, we end up returning negative one. So that should be it for our solution. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.